Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano has issued a new statement that I'm going to share with you, particularly addressed to Americans, and this is for the Reawaken America Tour by uh, a short little treatise here by Archbishop Vigano, but it's worth looking at for two reasons. Uh, I'm obviously not in the studio. I'm in Ohio. I was able to attend Low Mass with His Eminence Cardinal Burke today, uh, a big blessing, and also be surrounded by a lot of amazing Catholics. It's really, really encouraging. It's been a great day today. But I want to jump on and talk about what Archbishop Vigano says. He makes two good points here. Uh, he leads in, he talks about the elite, who he calls the antichristic elite or the satanic elite. And he says, the elite want us to believe that the changes they are imposing on us without any democratic legitimacy are for our good. The seemingly inexorable process has been planned for decades, and those who have desired it are implementing it. Bo they belong to the openly anti-Christian, anti-Christic lobbies, divorce, abortion, euthanasia, gender transition, pedophilia, moral corruption, cancel culture, immigration, manipulated crises, a way to eradicate every trace of Christian morality from our societies, and to deliberately create the impoverishment of the population and favor civil war. Their purpose is to divide us. He's so right. How many of us are divided, even within Catholicism? They win when we are divided. Unite the clans in charity and in truth. He says their purpose is to divide us, make us enemies of each other, instead of uniting and fighting them. And ultimately, all this chaos serves as a pretext to suppress the protests with new restrictions. Then he goes on and he says, Today we know that it is not so. We have the ability to escape from this hell on earth, and we must, but we can only do it if we understand two important and interconnected things. And this is why I wanted to jump on and do a quick podcast with you. By the way, if you're enjoying this, thumbs up. Archbishop Vigano, always provocative, important content. He says, first of all, Archbishop Vigano says, first of all, the globalists are certainly very well organized and have enormous economic means. But they are very few, and the members of this tyrannical elite have a name and a face, starting with, and here he's going to name names, you got to be careful, but I'm going to name them Rothschilds. Rockefellers, Gates, Soros, Schwab. And all their wealth and profits derive from the exploitation of the peoples and the complicity of the rulers who have been corrupted and bought out. Here, too, the names are well known. Many politicians and representatives of the leading institutions in various nations have participated in the Young Global Leaders for Tomorrow program, the school of subversion run by the World Economic Forum. How are the exponents of, super, of sup, supranational organizations whose purpose is their own enrichment and our enslavement different from the mafia? The rhetorical question, Vigano asks. What prevents us from rebelling against them in the same way that we would rebel against Mafia leaders. Boom. Here's the second point by Archbishop Vigano that I want to share. Second, the second important thing Vigano says to keep in mind is that in this spiritual battle, the globalist elite, however powerful it may seem, obeys Satan, the adversary, the one who is the murderer from the beginning, while we the people, with all our weaknesses, are aligned with the Almighty God. Do we believe that their master, Satan, is more powerful than our master, the Almighty God, Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, became incarnate and faced his passion and death on the cross precisely in order to break the chains of sin and death with which Satan holds us captive by the redemption 
we have been ransomed from the yoke of the devil, and through grace we have supernatural assistance in fighting the holy battle against the adversary of mankind, Satan. If we understand that victory has always been won, and that God is truly almighty, we also understand that if we side with the Lord and fight with him against his and our enemies, we will share in the victory. The question is not whether God will win over Satan. His victory is certain because Satan has already been conquered on the cross. The question is whether we want to win with God or inexorably lose with Satan. There's much more. I'd encourage you to go read it. You can go to your life site. That's the key. That's what I wanted to share with you guys today. God wins. Satan loses. You see that in the Gospels. You see that in the Apocalypse. By the way, check out my book, Antichrist and Apocalypse. It is the most hopeful book you could read because it's the end of the Bible. It's the book of Revelation. And we win. Christ wins. But not everybody. There are people who side with the devil, the Antichrist, the false prophet. That's the unholy trinity. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. And they are thrown into the lake of fire with all those who follow and take the mark of the beast, who conform to the image of Satan and are not conformed by baptism, faith, and obedience to Jesus Christ. So you are guaranteed to win if you unite yourself in faith, hope, and charity to Jesus Christ and persevere to the end. You are guaranteed the victory in Christ. You are also guaranteed the loss of everything, including your own soul, if you go with Satan. And that's a decision that we make every day. It's a decision that we make every hour. I think it's notable that Archbishop Vigano takes so seriously his role as a voice to the United States of America. A lot of people in Europe, especially when they talk to me, these are traditional Catholics, they say, we don't understand the whole Vigano America thing. And you have to understand that Archbishop Vigano was the apostolic nuncio from the Vatican, from the Holy See, to the United States, and that he has a deep vested interest in the bond of the Catholic Church with the United States of America. So a lot of other a lot of people in other countries they don't get it, but we get it in America. It's an important relationship, a union, a bond. And then also, I think a lot of people, especially traditional Catholics in Europe, don't fully understand how deep and raw the wound is with ex-Cardinal McCarrick. Cardinal McCarrick was the Cardinal Archbishop of Washington DC. He was pedophile. He was a bad man. And he was the archbishop of our capital for so long and was revered by so many and in a way structured the American Episcopate and in a way painted the face of American Catholicism and turned out to be such a Judas priest. And that wound is still open. It has not healed. And Archbishop Vigano was really the one to, to point it out in 2018 and to to basically shout it from the housetops and that was all during that summer of shame here in America so the voice of Archbishop Vigano is still very important in the United States of America this message is written to Americans for them to stand up and fight the anti-christic lobbies and I think you know as I talked to to Europeans I was in Europe this summer I was in Europe last summer and uh, we have a lot of great conversations and discussions. And I think there is sort of an awareness, of course, our, our heritage, our patrimony, our culture is so wrapped up in, in the legacy of Europe here in America. But when it comes to this culture war, America still, in a way, has a form of resistance, and it's being eroded. And I think... As people around the world look to the culture wars and they look at voices that are out there shouting from the rooftops, not just Archbishop Viganos, but others, they realize that there is an important role there in America and that it's being eroded by these anti-Christic lobbies. So I think that's why Archbishop Vigano uh, made this address 
and he has those two important details. I won't go over them because I just did, if you're just joining us. So um, go back to the beginning of this video and watch it. But it's really, really important that we have this window right now. And the world is on fire. You look at Israel and the Palestinians, you look at Ukraine, you look at Russia, you look at China now taking some signs, you look at Iran coming in, Syria, things are at a fever pitch. And the answer is to turn to Jesus, to recommit ourselves. So that's the message. I think we should pray a Hail Mary together. We'll do an Ave Maria. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu, Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et et ora mortis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, signing out from Ohio. Please like the video. Please subscribe. Please share this video all over Facebook and Twitter, wherever you do your social media. And remember, until next time, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Also, I just want to say today I was able to um, go to the uh, Servant of God Rhoda Shrine here in, in Canton, Ohio. And uh, very amazing. If you never looked into Servant of God Rhoda, check it out. All right. God bless and Godspeed.